Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. <laughs> and I want to talk today about something that might be on everybody's mind right now, which is New Year's Eve. <clears throat> the new year is coming up pretty soon, and some of us may have a new puppy, a new rescue dog, or an old dog, or uh, same with a cat. And all of these things are reasons to take a moment to think about what's going to happen to your pets on New Year's Eve. My town has a fireworks display at six in the evening, which is about five miles from me. Still really loud here. Sounds like gunshots. And another one around midnight. And many towns do fireworks as part of the New Year's celebration. And even if your town does it, your neighbors might be shooting guns or doing fireworks. This is time to be concerned for your pet because they don't know what these sounds are and they can be scared. If your dog is typically afraid of thunderstorms, um, 4th of July, any kinds of loud noises, gunshots, uh, New Year's Eve can be a hard time for them. So the first thing you want to do is not bring your dog with you to watch fireworks. No dog is happy about that. Um, consider leaving them at home in their favorite room with their favorite bed with some nice quiet music playing on the radio to help drown out the sounds of the evening um, and this is true even if you go to bed let's say at 10 30 um, you might want to make sure you have some music on in another room where your dog might be to help keep him calm during the fireworks that might occur at midnight you have to know what's going on in your own town so giving him a peaceful space to be in is the first step towards keeping your dog calm. Um, a second option is to um, use some of the flower es essences that my sister and I have on our website um, from Botanical Animal. <coughs> and uh, the first one that you'd pick for uh, problems with New Year's Eve and Fourth of July would be this one, which is Mellow Out. It's for calming a nervous or jittery animal that may be edgy all the time or for an anxious animal, or one that um, can easily lose control. For instance, uh, something happens and the animal becomes extremely nervous, may even pee on the floor because they're so nervous. This is a great thing to use before a competition, around the time of fireworks or thunderstorms, and the company that makes it says never leave home without it because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, for instance, you could be stuck in not moving traffic for hours and hours and there's big trucks next to you and your dog is getting anxious. A couple of drops of Mellow Out can really help them in that situation. So I recommend Mellow Out as your first choice to use. And you just, it's, um, it's a homeopathic, it's a, well, it's a flower essence, which is different than a homeopathic. So I would just put a few drops in their water that they're, and maybe even in their food or in their mouth or on a treat, that they're having that day, all day New Year's Eve, just to get them ready. It just takes the edge off, helps them relax. Um, and for more information about Mellow Out, you can go back to some of my like 145 number conversations with a corgi where I did an hour and a half talk about each one of these flower essences and why they work and what's in them. And many of those flowers that are in them are growing in my garden. Um, the first episodes even show you how to make a flower essence. So mellow out, first thing you might try. There's another one they have called Easy Does It. You might have this around your house and not have the mellow out. Easy Does It is for obsessive, destructive behavior of property, chewing things, um, difficulty when you leave the dog alone, whining, crying, frustration, loneliness, jealousy, boredom. So if your dog's behavior when he's nervous resorts to things like chewing on a chair leg or eating the carpet or spinning in circles or whining and pacing, um, Easy does it might be one that would work for you. I mean, I do muscle testing on dogs and use a pendulum to determine which flower essence might be the best for them. But if you happen to have easy does it around the house, that's another one that you can use. Now, if you are not prepared and you don't have any of those in the house and your dog has not had a reaction before, but he does this year, um, the flower essence you might want to try after the fact would be one called Christ Ease. And this is used whenever there's been a shocking situation that overfaces your animals, um, such as leaving them in the kennel for a couple of days. Uh, when they become shaky, off balance, panicked, it's good for emergencies, after surgery. It helps get the crisis out of the dog's body.
I have had several in the past that were petrified, but mine now are not. So crises might be a good one to use if your dog suddenly has a problem. Right now, the baby Corgi, my friend has, um, is living near me. He might be he's two more miles away, so it might not be as loud there. Um, and he has lived through a 4th of July, again, in a different area. So who knows how loud it was. But if he has a terrible reaction on New Year's Eve to the loudness and the noises and, you know, cars tearing up and down the road 100 miles an hour, um, crises might be what you want to use to help him get over that. So now you don't have a problem every time you have a New Year's Eve thunderstorm, fireworks, 4th of July situation for your pet. Some of the other things you can do to help your pet on these days when he might be nervous is get your thunder shirt out. Now thunder shirts, um, which I didn't find mine to put it on him. It's also hard to put on. It's a very tight little gray shirt that Velcros on your dog and it gives him a hug. It's similar to the idea that Temple Grandin popularized about, uh, for those who don't know, she's a person who developed humane slaughter for cattle to keep them from being panicked during the process of that. Um, and she's uh, autistic and quite famously so. So one of the things she found when she was in a panic and not feeling secure, that being hugged made her feel better. Be well, not by a human, but being in a tight space. So the thunder shirt idea came about from our T-Touch wraps. And the idea behind that is to help calm you down, give you a sense of your boundaries, know where you are in space, help your proprioception and help you calm down. You cannot put a thunder shirt on your dog for instance, at four in the afternoon and leave it on it till midnight. Um, that is not good and it will lose its effectiveness and it will make your dog very uncomfortable. And depending on the hair your dog has, there's a lot of Velcro on those things. If you have like a Shih Tzu or some dog like that with silky hair, it's going to get caught in the Velcro and make your dog miserable. However, if you live in a town like me where the fireworks are at six and midnight, put the thunder shirt on at like five minutes to six and take it off maybe 10 minutes after the fireworks have ended and keep an eye on your dog while you're doing that and he's in his thunder shirt and you can do the same thing again at midnight an option that i like um, is the t-touch wrap you just get an ace bandage this one's been beautifully dyed by my friend jamie into this raspberry color and you're just gonna any old one will work it has it, an ace wrap is better than like brand x but if that's all you have that's all you have and if you don't have an ace wrap, you can use an old pantyhose, an old tight, um, you know, even some stretchy fabric you might have in the house. Uh, socks sometimes can work if they're long enough and your dog's little. So you just put it on the dog's chest. So you have two ends. And in an emergency, I've done this with belts because, you know, as a horse person, I always have a belt um, or knee socks. <laughs> and I've done this with ribbon. And then you cross it on the dog's back, bring it back under the tummy and cross it back up and then either velcro um, or tie it in a little knot if it's not long enough you can take it back one wrap layer and just have the x around the front and then tie it underneath so you have some options with that again don't leave it on your dog for seven hours put it on him a few minutes before the fireworks start and a few, couple of minutes afterwards and then put them on him again if there's another round of fireworks this is a really great thing um, and it's so easy. Everybody has a ace wrap in their house pretty much somewhere in a first aid kit they haven't opened. Um, but it really helps calm your dog. I had a little guy here the other day who had just come back from the kennel <laughs> where he had to stay for two or three days while his parents were away for Christmas. And you know, it's a kennel. They don't take them out to pee. All these house pets don't know what to do when nobody takes them out to pee. They get frantic, they pace. The little guy is 17 years old, so that made it harder. He just had a heck of a time there and probably wasn't eating right. Uh, maybe wasn't even eating his own food because uh, some kennels don't feed the food that you bring. Um, and he had had a bath when he came home because he was covered in pee and you know, just all kinds of stuff going on. He was pacing and whining and crying and we put the wrap on him and he immediately calmed down tremendously markedly so um, so these wraps are super effective and anytime you have a dog that's having a problem if you can get a wrap on them that is a good thing and again it can be your belt I have used my belt and just held it sometimes if it doesn't reach long enough to fit the dog perfectly um, 
and that's often at a parade or something where I am and or, or the guy that's with the dog is big enough like if he's got a Labrador that the belt will go around the dog a couple times makes a huge difference almost immediately so a wrap is another thing to keep in mind um, to help keep your dog calm during the festivities of the New Year's so those are a few options um, and I have you know one thing people always ask is if I don't have a wrap I don't have a belt can I just hug my dog well, look at Tristan when I hug him. Did you hear him hold his breath and go, ee? He does not like to be hugged. Hugging him would stress him even more because he wouldn't feel like he could get away. Now, some dogs don't mind that. And there was a dog at a big parade where I was this summer. And he was a young pit bull rescue. The guy had had him about six months. He was really panicking, running in circles at the end of his leash. And I said to the guy, we've got to try to find a way to contain this dog to help him calm down. So... He sat on the ground with his legs bent up and put the dog's butt against his crotch and he kind of hugged him with his arms around the front this way. Immediately, dog changed. Ears dropped, tail dropped. Dog was much calmer, breathing, not drooling. And the guy was like, oh, I wish I had known to do this an hour ago. I was like, Jesus, he's been like this for an hour, the poor dog. And he was so stressed he wouldn't even eat. So... Um, yeah, you're lucky when your dog isn't bothered by fireworks and things. Um, but some dogs are, and, and some dogs are for some parts of their life and then not at other times. So it just depends. Quiet music, a quiet room, keeping them in, uh, the typical routine they have, all that stuff really helps keep them calm. And, you know, I've helped many, many a dog with a wrap or some semblance thereof. I've used the arms of a sweatshirt to wrap a dog um, when I'm in Provincetown sometimes. So be creative, but don't forget to use a wrap if you need it. So thanks for joining us for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi, where we've talked about some things you can do to help your dog get through the New Year's celebrations without being scared. And those things included using a variety of flower essences, um, using a wrap, using a thunder shirt. And you can also just stroke their ears. The ears are connected to the limbic system, which is the emotional system of the body. Just stroking their ears like this can calm them down. That little guy that was here the other day that we put the um, wrap on, one of his people was stroking his ears, which she could not do because he would not hold still prior to the wrap. And he calmed like a different dog. He was so calm. One ear Japanese chins started being terrified at eight years old. Oh, yeah. Well, rub the ears, put them in a wrap, <laughs> go find a, a wrap Marlene and go down to the CVS or start rooting through your bathroom drawers. Um, so stroke the ears. There's lots of things you can do to help your dog. And again, the flower essences are available on my website and my sister's website, and we can ship them out really fast to you. Um, so thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We will not be back Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Um, I think we're back Thursday, so we'll see you in the new year. We used to get a kick out of that when I was a little kid in school. See you next year, and it's like December 20th. <laughs> and you're like, huh? New year, Next year? What? <laughs> thanks, Danny. Happy New Year to you and everyone as well. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day.